Hey everybody, welcome back to Her Black Hand, the podcast where we talk about everything and everything goes. I'm your host, Alexis Lawson, and thank you so much for tuning in to episode four, Friends or Friendless. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to give a couple of announcements. So I've gotten a couple questions about why I start the episodes off with saying what I look like or what I have on, and it's because I want to be as accessible as possible for the people who are visually impaired. So for those who cannot just simply go on my Instagram or look me up to see what I look like, they have a better visual or mental visual of who they're listening to. And so the second thing that I want to say is like, y'all, my allergies is acting up. My asthma is kicking my tail. So if I sound out of breath, I am. But that ain't going to stop us. We're going to get into today's episode of talking about friendships. So the book that we're going to be talking about in today's episode is called Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany Jackson. This is probably the second book that I read by Tiffany Jackson, the first one being Grown that came out in September of 2020. So this story is a story about a little girl whose best friend goes missing. And so these best friends are locked at the hip, matching, going everywhere together. And so this little girl goes to the end of the earth to try and figure out what happened to her best friend. She goes through disappearing her parents, sneaking into people's houses, taking trips to entirely different cities without letting her parents know and the ending it was so unexpected but I'm not going to tell y'all the ending in case y'all want to read the book but just know that like while you're reading this book you're going to think you know what happened until you get to the end you're going to be like oh my god it is going to shock you to the max but since we're talking about friendship I thought that this would be a great opportunity to talk about this book because one of the things that was very prevalent and one of the biggest themes that I picked up on was not only like child abuse but it was about friendship y'all when you read this book you're going to see how important friendship was to this little girl because this girl the girl that goes missing Monday was her best friend it was like her only friend and while she had to try and develop these other friendships while she was trying to find her best friend you realize the different aspects that friendships have and the different levels that they build up on over years and the things that we don't necessarily pay attention to until we're no longer around and with that person. And so the first thing we're going to talk about today is just the importance of friendship. And I don't think I really understood the importance of friendship until maybe my junior year of high school or maybe even my freshman year of college because I was never that kid that had like that solid group of friends that I was always with or hung out with or had sleepovers with or went on trips with. I just was never that friend because when I was in Ohio, I moved schools a lot. So it really wasn't until like I got into high school where I developed like a couple of friends that I actually hung out with. Not saying that I didn't have friends that I talked to or like saw during the school day, but those were like specific specifically my school friends. I didn't have friends that I had outside of school until my junior year of high school. And that's really when I started to make like my first real best friends when I moved to North Carolina. And so I had always been the type of person that had like male friends and not saying that that's a bad thing, but it wasn't until I got to college and got like my first girlfriend that I realized how important it is for women to have female friends. I think the support is just different. The expectations of the relationship is just different. And it's just important to surround yourself with good women. I feel like as women, we are already always conditioned to like put ourselves up against each other and be in this like competition that's invisible to everybody but ourselves. We're always trying to like one up. So having those consistent girlfriends around you, I didn't really know that was such an important thing or such a thing that I needed. But now as I got my one best friend, Deja, you know, I really see that it's so important to have female friends. And so while we're going to talk about friendships, I want to talk about how I learned to love through friendship. So the best friend that I made in high school really taught me how to love on another level that I had never experienced. I had never had a friendship that expected the things out of me that that friendship expected. And so it was a completely different world to me. But in that, in experiencing that, I really got a grasp on how I need to learn how to love people better and meet them where they are because everybody's not going to be the same and you can't take the same approach with all of your friends. And so in that friendship, I really learned how to be patient with not only other people, but how to be patient with myself and just how to be a decent person. I think when I met my best friend, he was just like, he was just like this stand up person. He was funny. Everybody enjoyed him. He was just, he just had this very honest and wholesome aura to him. And that I really liked that. And I really think that that's something that I look for in a friend. And so in that, he taught me the things that I 
didn't get from my other friendship that I had considered very close friends. And so when Monday's not coming home, the little girls have been friends since they were young girls. And I think that's something that I really want for my kids because I never got to have that type of friendship because I was just always moving around. But the thing that I found with my high school best friend is that he had already had this grand group of best friends that he had grown up with since he was a kid. And so the dynamics of their friendship and the dynamics of our friendship were completely two separate things. And even now, now I can still see that they're two separate things. It's like having brothers and sisters and having a best friend. Like you still see them as like, oh, that's my sister. But like, no, this is my sister and this is my brother. And so I felt like that disconnect and like the friendship. And so that's what I'm coming to say. Like every friendship is not the same. So when you're learning how to love your friends and how to be a better friend to them, everything is not going to be just this default setting of like you treat them this way or y'all hang out this way because every person is not the same and the way that you interact with everybody won't be the same. And so that leads me into my next point of what we learn about ourselves through the friends we keep. So the friends we keep tell a lot about our character and a lot about the way that we see ourselves. Because if we have subpar friends, then we may not see ourselves in the greatest light. But if we have these outstanding people around us, then people are going to just assume like, oh, he's friends with such and such. Like he has to be like this stand up person because such and such is a stand up person. You know what I mean? So the friends that we keep have have an important role on the way that other people see us and not only the way that other people see us but the way that we are see, we see ourselves it's like when our moms used to say like if such and such decided to jump off a bridge would you jump off a bridge like you need to have friends that you would say like if such and such did this would you do this i'm like yeah because if such and such doing it then it's a good idea you know what i'm saying so the friends that we keep tell a lot about ourselves and having these great friends we learn a lot about the areas in ourselves that either need improvement or the areas of ourselves that we need to highlight more i think our friends bring out different parts of us that we don't necessarily see when we're by ourselves like people always talk about like soul ties and things like that but i think like the best soul connections that we have are with our friends and sometimes those connections are overlooked because we're so busy trying to find them in romantic partners when we don't really look at the friendship side of what our soul needs so we have to also look at how we say that friendships are the basis of everything but what if we don't know how to hold a steady friendship then how can we expect to hold a steady relationship when friendship should be the foundation of those romantic relationships and I think we also need to get out of the habit of saying like relationship in only a romantic term because relationships are anything that you share relations with whether that's conversation, whether that's personal connection, that is a relationship, anything you have a connection to. And so my next point that I want to talk about is holding our friends accountable. We are so quick to call our friends out because we have a different emotional connection to them. I think friendships are so much better sometimes than relationships because we don't have as many expectations in our friendships. Not saying that the expectations in our friendships are like subpar and our friendships can be any kind of way and they don't have any structure, but I think in romantic relationships, we have so many expectations that there's not much leeway for things to just fly free. But in our friendships, we have more room for things to just fly free. I think we all need friends who will hold us accountable for our shit because ain't nothing like having a friend around that don't tell you when your shit stank because I don't want a friend that's going to have me out here looking crazy or have me thinking I'm doing the greatest thing and I'm not doing anything. That's not the type of friend I want. I want the type of friend that's going to tell me like, hey, you need to really get it together. Like, that's not cute. You're not out here doing your best. You could be doing so much better because sometimes we need those extra pushes and we need the people who are closest to us to tell us that because when it's coming from outside sources, it's going to feel like an attack. But when it's coming from the people around us, it's going to feel like, oh, he genuinely means this from a good place. Let me really look at how I'm feeling and not only when your shit stank but like holding them accountable for the things that brings us joy I think we need to put joy back in our friendships and that leads me to talk about like the way that we need to have supportive friends like there's nothing like having a friend that supports you and like in our head we want our friends to be the first ones to support us but in reality we see that it's the people that we don't even know that go as hard for us and like I don't want friends like that I want my friends to be the first ones to support me like I want them to go as hard for me as I go for them and just like talking about joy like not letting our friendship turn into these alternate therapy sessions because that is not what our friendships is for because just because our friends will listen doesn't mean that we should overload them with our problems you know what I'm saying and so I went to one of my sister's churches 
one Sunday. And the only reason that I went was because I know she's heavily involved with the youth ministry and works really hard with those kids. And I wanted to show my support with it being Youth Sunday and all. Meanwhile, I'm sitting with her brother and we're entertaining this baby while his parents listen to people on stage. And they had to set up like a talk show. They had a panel of people and they were all between the ages of 21 and 28 and a mediator for the questions. And to me, this was a decent age range, one that I believe doesn't get a platform to speak on certain issues a lot of the times. And I was thoroughly listening to how these people found God on their own. And one thing about the 28 year old, he said that really stood out to me. He was like, sometimes you have to love the hell out of people because they may be going through a hell that we may not know about. And if y'all can't tell already, I love love. I am going to get into the point where I can properly vocalize what I need in love and how I can be a better lover because there are so many times that I have given way too much of myself and put too much energy into a bad situation and when he said this it just gave me something to think about like I used to give 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 and never get back and it used to just frustrate me I used to try and guilt people into seeing how they were making me feel because I felt like it was apparent that this is what was going on and how they were affecting me but over time I really had to pull back and redefine how I give and receive that love because anybody who knows me knows that I'm a very loving person and no matter what happens in my life that's one trait that I would like to say the same about me but the difference to me now is that I know how to love people better in different situations I know how not to hurt myself in the process of trying to give so much to someone else and I think that plays a lot into how we have these successful friendships Mm -hmm. and so like you nobody wants to be in a friendship where they feel like they're giving so much and not getting back and so when Monday's not coming back I feel like the little girls were just like especially Claudia the girl who was looking for her best friend was just living in this like bliss of ignorance she was so unaware of like the actual things that were going on in her best friend's life because she was so clouded about the good things that she did when she was with her and so I think Claudia wanted what was best for Monday but when Monday wanted to do other things she wasn't very supportive of that and I don't think when you love somebody and when you're a true friend to somebody you don't support their dreams that's not love that's not friendship there are some things that you may say like if it's terrible like I understand that but if your friend is genuinely trying to do something that to better themselves or to get themselves out of a situation that's not good for them then you should be supportive of that and so I had to understand that sometimes people don't see it the way that you're seeing so they're not understanding the way that you're trying to make them understand and so I really want to talk about when do we decide to leave these toxic relationships when we aren't getting as much as we're giving so we're just going to define the word toxic toxic is defined as very harmful or unpleasant in a persuasive or insidious way poisonous just poison when we hear poison we automatically know it's bad and why would we want something that's so close to our heart to be filled with poison to be harmful or unpleasant these things are supposed to be some of the greatest things that we experience in life and I don't want a toxic friendship we talk so much about toxic relationships let's talk about the toxic friendships that we have in our lives these very harmful engagements that we have with our friends like let's talk about it let's talk about how it's so important to not only let these toxic friendships go but really analyze how we get into these toxic friendships and how we get to the point of where it feels like there's it's so hard to let go and we should just let go because we should want more for ourselves so we're, I'm just going to talk tell y'all a little bit about a, like a toxic friendship that I'm having or like going on with now and it's just like I'm trying to talk to them and I'm trying to be a good friend to them and it's just like I'm giving you more than you're giving me why should I continue to reach out to you try and continue to hang out with you when you're not giving me the same energy you're literally not communicating with me you're not trying to see me you're telling me one thing but then I see you doing another thing and so that's another thing about social media like you can paint this whole persona of how your life is going to go and so the people who are like on the outside or that you put on the outside they may never really know what's really going on and so I think as friends we have this responsibility to not only keep up with our friends and like understanding that sometimes it's not a space in our mental health it's not space in our world that we have those moments where we can be like hey I'm really just not feeling it it's not you it's literally just me I'm not feeling like reaching out to people but at the same time don't y'all think we owe our friends just a smidge of like explanation because if you fall off the face of the earth or you just stop answering my phone calls I'm gonna think that I did something wrong and if I didn't do something wrong then like hey can you let me know I I didn't do something wrong because I'm sitting over here over analyzing the convert the last conversation that we had and you're saying I didn't do anything wrong you're saying we're going to hang out you're saying we're going to talk when you um get through whatever you're going through but now I see you hanging out with other people so is our friendship not as important to you as it is to me like am I 
not supposed to be going as hard as I'm going for you because you're not going as hard for me. And so that's the thing that we often see in these type of friendships. And it's just like, I don't want to let this friendship go because we sometimes mix healthy with longevity. And just because a friendship has history doesn't mean that it's one that's healthy for you. And so when do we get to the point of letting these toxic relationships and toxic friendships go and realize that just because you have history with somebody or just because you've been friends with somebody for a period of time doesn't mean that the friendship is a good one. Doesn't mean that the friendship is one that you need to hold on to. And so looping back around to the structure of our friendships, I think that we try and make our romantic relationships so structured and that falls apart in our platonic friendships. I think we let so many things slide in our friendships because we're like, oh, it's, they're just my friend. They don't have any responsibility or obligation to me. But you should hold your friends to the same standard that you hold your romantic partners to you wouldn't want your partner giving you half-assed love so why are you accepting half-assed love from the person that you consider a friend because I don't want a friend that's going to give me half of anything when I'm giving them 110 percent of myself so you like why why do you even want to accept 50 percent when you're giving 110 percent of yourself so we also need to start holding our friends accountable and calling them out on their shit when they're not being a good friend and sometimes you have to check yourself and be like are they not being a good friend or am I being being like over exaggerating but it's like no they're not being a good friend to me you're not giving me what I need in this friendship and so also we can't just be cutting people off because they're not giving us what we need in our friendships and not expressing to them what we need or not showing them how we give it not saying that you should teach every person how to treat you and how to love you but if this relationship is very important to you you should at least give it a shot if they're willing to listen but if they're not willing to listen we're gonna keep saying that I'm not giving you more than you're giving me because are we friends or do I just need to be friendless because I'm not about to exhaust myself trying to give myself to you and you're not even trying to give me a slither of yourself and so like I said I didn't really have like friends until my junior year of high school and so I became a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated my freshman year of college and so that was my first time that I had genuinely been surrounded by a bunch of of women. And so now I had these four sisters that are like stuck with me for life. And I really learned true friendship through going through the process of becoming a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated with my sisters, because we are all five different people. None of us are exactly the same. We all have different interests. We all have different likes, dislikes, but no matter the dislikes or likes that we have, we all had to come together because we are agreeing on this one thing. And so with that, I learned to sit back and listen and observe and not be so quick to rebuttal. And I had to learn how to be a friend to each individual person because I was only friends with one of my line sisters. I didn't know too much about any of the other girls on my line. And so I really had to learn them in a very quick setting and so I always tell people especially people who are just now becoming Greek like you're not going to like your line sisters or line brothers when you first cross like you're going to get tired of them but that doesn't mean you should stop working to make it work sometimes it doesn't work but if it can work you should definitely try to make it work I think sometimes we put so much effort into our romantic relationship that we don't even try and make these friendships work we get so tired because we they don't hold the same importance in our lives and I think we should put more pressure and more more emphasis and, and effort into our friendships because when those romantic relationships fall our friends are going to be the ones to hold us up and so having my line sisters not love each other as people would think that we did it really made me want to learn to be a better person because I'm like bro this is my sister I want to be as close as possible because one I don't have sisters I have a brother so I was just genuinely excited to get like four new friends that I can call my own and like they're gonna be with me for the rest of my life like I'm thinking like yeah they're gonna be my bridesmaids at my wedding and this is just like first meeting them because I was so excited to have that bond of sisterhood to have that bond of friendship because what we always say like Just because you're my sister doesn't mean you have to be my friend. But to me, it's like, because you're my sister, I want you to be my friend. I want to be a better friend to you before I'm your sister. Like, can I, can you teach me how to be your friend so that I can be a better sister? And so sometimes in our friendships, we really have to sit back and like ask them, like, how can I be a better friend to you? Like, how can I love you better as a friend if you're not feeling like I'm I'm not giving you 110% because I don't want my friends to feel like they're not getting 
a hundred percent of me because nobody wants a half-ass experience nobody's going to the movies and paying for half of a movie you're going to pay for the whole movie because you want to see the entire movie like I am in this to win it I want the entire package of what comes with this friendship and I can't get the entire package of what comes with this friendship if we're not equally on the same page so in this season of things that we need to reevaluate, why is it that we never prioritize our friendships and relationships for reevaluation? We always want to reevaluate the jobs that we keep and the things that we do, but we never want to sit down and really look at the friendships and the people that surround us. I think that's something that should always be in constant evaluation and looking into how we can, one, be better friends and if the friends that we are keeping are good for our mental health, mind, body, and soul. So today's episode is just a little bit shorter than the rest of them, but I wanted to leave y'all with these thoughts of friendship and how important it is to have true friendship and wholesome friendship and healthy friendship in our lives and how it's important that we get rid of all the toxic friendships and the ideas of what a friend should be and really think of like what type of friend do you need so thank you guys so much for tuning into episode four friend or friendless do not forget to subscribe on any platform that you listen to the podcast and don't forget to come back every tuesday for a new episode all right i catch y'all in my next one peace